It's Sunday, so you know what that means. What is going on in this person's brain? This is a 45-year-old female who presents with altered mental status and complaints of headache. Now, she has a history of methamphetamine abuse and was actually hospitalized a few months ago for drug overdose. Uh, per report by EMS in the field is that her daughter found her unresponsive with some meth beside her. Upon EMS arrival, she was moaning at the scene incomprehensible speech. She was opening her eyes to pain, and she was localizing and combative to pain on her right side, but her left side appeared to be weak. So what is the patient's GCS or Glasgow Coma Score? And in the field, what do we think is going on here with the patient with this type of presentation? I gave you a little teaser at the beginning, but this is the patient's CAT scan when they arrived to the emergency department. So my questions on this study are obviously, what's the diagnosis? What are the treatments in the field that paramedics can do with the patient with this type of presentation to ensure a safe arrival to the emergency department? And then again, what is the treatment for this type of problem? And did her drug abuse play a role into that? And if the drug abuse did play a role into that, how does meth cause this type of problem? All right, look for the video answers tomorrow and I'll explain everything. What is that? You guys ready for the explanation? So remember, we had the 45-year-old female who presented after being found down with methamphetamine beside her with ultra mental status and headache. And the first question I had asked in this case is, what is her GCS? The reason why we ask this question is it really helps uh, medical providers communicate with how obtunded or how out of it someone is when they come into the ER. So that's what we call the Glasgow Coma Score. In her case, she was a GCS of nine. We said she opens her eyes to pain. We said that she was incomprehensible sounds and that she localized uh, to painful stimulus. So that gives her a GCS of nine. And someone with a GCS of eight or less typically needs endotracheal intubation or being put on life support to support their airway. So in this case, she's kind of teetering on that bridge. So she's, she's hanging in there pretty close needing an intubation. I asked what we thought in the field may be going on with her, and she's weak on one side, complaining of headaches. Her automatic thought is that she may have had a stroke, so this would need to be a stroke alert to the emergency department upon arrival. So in someone that is being brought in by EMS as a stroke alert, there are things that you can do in the field to ensure a safe, proper transportation, which means keeping an eye on their blood pressure, keeping an eye on their airway, making sure that the team and the ER is expecting a stroke alert, which means there are certain uh, tests that they'll have ready for the patient, and keeping their head of bed elevated. The head of bed elevated decreases intracranial pressure in the event that something's going on in their brain. In addition to that, you want to make sure they're getting well oxygenated, so just keeping an eye on their oxygenation to ensure that they're not losing their airway and they're not building up carbon dioxide either, which can also uh, worsen intracranial pressure. This was this patient scan. So what we see down there is a large intracerebral hemorrhage or a bleed into the brain. And there's actually some extension of the blood into the ventricles or the fluid filled space of the brain. In a patient with a blood clot that size, basically 60 cc's or more, and that's how we calculate the amount of blood in there, uh, I recommend that we evacuate that. And how I did that in this case is that we made a small portal incision, I placed a small tube into there to evacuate the blood products out of that uh, area of the stroke. Now, she was on meth. Um, so the other question I asked is if meth played a role in this, and the answer is yes. Methamphetamine is an amphetamine, and upon taking a hit of meth, it skyrockets the blood pressure, which can lead to an intracerebral hemorrhage and is a common presentation, unfortunately, that we see. So the patient did well after the surgery. She did have full vision loss in that field of the brain where she had a stroke, um, but she did uh, go on to survive this type of hemorrhage. We also directed her to get the help that she needs in terms of uh, helping with her drug habit. Um, so I hope that you guys learned something from this uh, case study today and hope you guys have a good rest of the week and I'll see you next Sunday.